Good day everyone, we are BSM 11D and today we are gonna talk about teen depression and anxiety. Most people who live with the mental illness have at some point been blamed for his or her condition. They need been called names. Their symptoms are brought up as a phase or something they might control if they only try. They need been illegally discriminated against with no justice. This can be the unwieldy power that stigma holds. Furthermore, the health profession once thought depression affected only adults. However, the chance for the condition can begin in childhood or the first teens and increases steadily through the mid-twenties. Depression in children, teens, and young adults is far over a phase. It's a, true, it's a true condition which will interfere with everyday life, cause suicidal thoughts and behavior, and persist to affect an individual throughout life. Depression is quite just a sense of despair or hopelessness. It's a, it's a significant psychological state disorder that causes a persistent feeling of sadness, which will last for weeks or months and interfere with the person's ability to participate in daily activities. One of the causes of teen depression and anxiety is trauma. Teenagers with a history of traumatic events, like loss of a parent, emotional and regulatory offense, violence, or involvement in an accident, may cause changes within the brain that make an individual more prone to anxiety and depression. One of the major problems of teen depression and anxiety that comes in and environmental factors. A teenager's social, school, and home environment can have an impact on their mental health. Difficulties such as abuse and neglect, divorce in the family, being bullied, poverty, learning disabilities, and struggling to fit may contribute to depression and anxiety. Uh, teenage social. Teenagers who are experiencing puberty may additionally bear hormonal changes that affect their mood and ponder to the stresses of a changing body, which may make them feel different than their peers. So negative thought patterns. Depression and anxiety in teenagers is also linked to negative thought patterns. If teenagers have regular exposure to negative thinking, often from their parents, they'll also develop a negative worldview. The effect of trauma is self-harm behavior. They may engage in self-mutilation such as cutting or burning their skin off to the extent. They engage in risky or destructive behaviors either alone or with friends. It may also cause them to have suicidal thoughts. The effects of environmental factor is low energy, turn oil, worry, and irritability. They may lack energy, which causes them to lose pleasure and interest in things they used to enjoy. They are spending more time alone, avoiding social activities, and withdrawing from friends and family. The teen may also sleep too much or too little or seem constantly tired. With this, they may have trouble in organizing, concentrating, or remembering drastic changes in appetite and weight may also happen. He may also feel worthless and guilty that causes him to a feeling of sluggishness and restlessness. Lastly, involvement with the juvenile justice system. The teen may brood or lash out in anger because of the distress he or she feels, causing him to be involved with the juvenile justice system. So for the effects of the negative thought patterns are substance misuse because of their negative views of life and the world, they may turn to these substances to self-medicate their emotions. Drug and alcohol misuse may further affect teenagers' moods and lead them to an increased level of depression. So what should be done to prevent the major problem to happen? There's no sure way to prevent anxiety and depression. However, there are strategies that may help teenagers in coping with this serious disorder. First, we must encourage teenagers to take, to take steps to control stress. Increase resilience and boost self-esteem to help handle issues when they arise. They must also keep the lines of communications open for them to reach out for social, social support, especially in times of crisis. Moreover, parenting things can be very challenging. If there are some effective communication techniques parents can use to help lower the stress level of their children, such as giving them the teen a breathing room, not forcing the team down a path that the parents wanted them to follow, 
have a good model of lifestyle and relationships, listening closely to discover more about the issues causing the problems and allowing a teenager to make mistakes. Furthermore, as a friend or a relative, you must try to see the world that the way they do and help them to keep a perspective and find ways to cope. As a society, we must also stop the stigma against mental illnesses. We must educate ourselves about depression itself and learn about its least important part of overall mental health. Thus, we must model a healthy lifestyle by following a healthy diet, getting enough sleep, being physically active, and interacting with friends and family on a regular basis. This would have a good impact on their susceptibility to depression. And lastly, what can, what can the group contribute to the solution? Our group can help in promoting lifestyle changes to teenagers by getting a routine, setting goals, and doing meditation. Furthermore, stigma causes people to feel ashamed for something that is out of their control. And worst of all, stigma prevents people from factors, warning signs, symptoms, and treatment options. Lastly, healthy activities are and seeking the help they need. With this, our group can contribute to the mental health community by raising our voice against it. Every day in every possible way, we need to stand up to stigma by talking openly about mental health and talking every opportunity to further educate ourselves and others. We can also fight stigma by reminding the people that their language matters and that we must refrain from using mental health conditions as problematic adjectives. We can also show compassion and choosing empowerment over shame by providing educational talks in the light of mental illnesses. Specifically, to parents and teenagers, bravery, strength, and persistence are the qualifies, qualities we collectively need to face mental illness and to fight stigma. Our group can also contribute by asserting that no matter how we participate to the mental health movement, each of us can make a difference simply by knowing that a mental illness is not anyone's fault, no matter what social social societal stigma is. And thank you for listening. So this is our group, BSM11B, reporting about building commitment through social responsibility.